is chat GPT a threat to the common man? I'm working at Wendy's. Is that going to, you know, am I going to lose my job to chat GPT? I mean, it sounds insane, right? Fearing a large language model when you're flipping burgers. Well, the drive through people for sure are on the way out. Yeah. Right. For taking orders, maybe not for giving you orders. Yeah. I mean, I, I think that's a good question, right? So let, let's just say that you've got this medical problem. Tell me, is Chad GPT going to be the first place that you go to when you get home? Probably. Yeah. Because I think we used to do WebMD. Okay. Right. You and I share mutual friends who are doctors. No. Yeah. Right. And we'll either call them, text them like, hey, what do you think? No. Yeah. But now there's Chad GPT. And if it's, I've got this thing popped up on my tuchus, maybe I don't want to talk to them about it. I put it into Chad GPT. So yeah. So should Dr. Zhivago be afraid <laughs> <laughs> that William Stern is not going to visit him? Isn't and the health insurance companies should anyone be scared that Chad GPT is going to replace the medical care that you were other, otherwise you'd receive? So initially, I would say no, but a friend of mine who you know, who's a vascular surgeon in San Diego, argues yes. Mm. He says if you're not a surgeon, you're just a general practitioner of medicine. You're f-ed. how so? There's no skill in being a doctor. It's just memorizing stuff. Okay. But if I have a condition, I have a problem, I'm really going to skip seeing the doc and look at a computer for my answers? I don't think it's a situation where you're going to self-medicate. I think it's a situation where you'll have a telehealth type situation where you can speak to a nurse or even AI and ask your problem to the nurse or the AI and the AI or the nurse can then communicate a solution. So yeah. I think doctors that aren't surgeons are probably fucked. And then what comes later for the surgeons is AI plus a mechanical robot that can do a better job of doing this. You know, like, let's take the example of we're not there with Tesla. Definitely not. Definitely not. It's not like, even close. like it slows down on a freeway for no reason. But you have a pi- you have a friend who's a pilot. How much flying with his hands? Is he doing on an airplane? Not a whole lot, but I'm not sure that large language models is what he should be afraid of. I guess AI in general could replace him doing that job. Right. Okay. So I, that may, maybe it's two separate things, right? It's, yeah. it's a language model like Claude or chat GPT. Yeah. And then you have just AI in general. Yeah. But Can it be trained to do a specific job? I think we probably think the answer is yes. But should we specifically be afraid of Chad GPT replacing our doctor? Probably not. Okay. Or a lawyer, right? Like what kind of legal advice would you be seeking from Chad GPT as opposed to when you finally <laughs> decide you're going to talk to a professional? Your wife's a lawyer. Would yeah. she ever use Chad GPT to like look up a statute, look up uh, historical precedents? And- sure. But okay. that doesn't replace her. That might help her be more efficient in what she does and might it's like yeah yeah. it's like iron man yeah right with the suit he becomes more powerful yeah no i mean they already have lawyers already have software that is implementing ai into everything they do there you go right so So they're they're way ahead of the curve all right so for they know this is coming so for those of you that are listening today you're (laughs) from a drive-through to flying a plane to being a medical doctor or a lawyer. It's coming for everybody. Come for everybody. But you know who it's coming for the most? Our jobs. <laughs> <laughs> poor, poor, poor. Yeah. It's going to get Why you. Why watch real people? They're going to come up with the best you'd ever want on demand. Because you're going to write a prompt of what you want. Mm. Wait, is this going to make wives obsolete? Are they, are they not already? <laughs> no, sorry. sorry. Yeah, sorry. Right. Shout out to our wives. Shit. No, I'm just kidding. Love you, honey. Yeah. I don't think it can do the nurturing part of what your wife can do. Sorry. <laughs> You're like, what? neither can she. <laughs> As Brad Lee would say, we're starting to get real. You better not get, you better not get that in post love. Yeah. <laughs> you take that shit out. I'm killing the you. The job that's really at risk for me is kind of the low level financial services job. Your stockbroker, okay. your uh, 
your stock jockeys over there at Morgan Stanley. Yeah, yeah. Right, Charles Schwab. This thing Fisher is investments. coming, Fisher Investments, this thing is coming for your job. And you ask, well, how do you know that? I know that because I played with it. It is incredibly ready to take those jobs on. So I did a real simple thing. I took a spreadsheet and put in the spreadsheet that I owned five stocks. I put five random stocks and I said I owned five random amounts of shares of those stocks. Were they real stocks? Yeah, real stock. What tickers. are these stocks? And it was like Microsoft, NVIDIA, you know, some other sort of McDonald's, some other Chipotle, some other common large cap stocks. And so you load the stupid spreadsheet into the data analyst feature of ChatGPT, the, the paid version. And you say, hey, ChatGPT, I'm a 40-year-old man with two children and a wife. Mm -hmm. And these, this is my portfolio. Did it respond? I'm sorry. And I said, hey, you know, could you help me rebalance this? Mm -hmm. uh, what, what do I do with this portfolio? Should I make any changes? And within seconds, ChatGPT told me exactly what my portfolio allocation should be between stocks, bonds, and alternative investments. Based off your age? I, I just randomly told it my age, that I'm married, and then I have two children. Yeah. So I asked it this simple question. Yeah. And what did ChatGPT say? Well, ChatGPT gave you a full response of how your portfolio should be allocated. Do you agree with it? And then I said, well, would you... Would you are you able to reallocate this portfolio I gave you? And said, absolutely. And it said, subtract this, add this, subtract this, subtract that. I said, oh my goodness. Yeah. Thank you so much for all of this financial advice. Yeah. But you don't give, fin and I typed, do you give financial advice? Absolutely not. Hmm. I said, well, that's very interesting because I feel like I was just given a whole lot of financial advice. So the next question, naturally, comes for, for us, which is, so where'd you get this information? Usually it'll tell you like, well, I went to these websites, right? right. This is coming from, uh, you know, finance.org. Right. This is from uh, Investopedia. Uh, Bloomberg. And he said, oh, I, I didn't get it from any websites. Oh, no. I said, excuse me? It's, it's sentient. Sorry, what? Yeah. <laughs> you do, you, there are no sources? Yeah. He goes, no, but, you know, I have general knowledge like, Knowledge given by the CFA Institute. Hmm. I was like, wow. So ChatGPT is a chartered CFA So now. not only is ChatGPT a chartered financial analyst, yeah. but it is also giving out financial advice at the ready. Was it good advice? I mean, how would you know? Was it, was, it logical, the portfolio it allocation? It was as good as the advice you get when you load any spreadsheet into ChatGPT today. Oh, so it's all wrong. Maybe. It's questionable, but could it get a lot better really fast? Absolutely. But I think that as a financial professional, when you watch it do its job, right. you should be scared shitless because if, you know, unless you're at Goldman Sachs managing somebody's, you know, five, 10, 15, a hundred million dollars, it was apparent and maybe I'm stupid. It's always you a are possibility. Listen, you are dumb. Let me tell you why you're dumb. You think that a self-directed investor will use ChatGPT to get the results they want, good or bad, right? They're going to get some result in the same way that you sit on a toilet every day and it breaks and then you're going to fix the toilet? That's absolutely not what I'm saying. Oh, okay. Well, what I'm saying is that OpenAI and Microsoft and whoever else is involved in this project yeah. is ready to enter the marketplace for giving financial advice. Okay. And Once they turn on the SPAC that's connected to the uh, nuclear uh, facilities that they're building. Yes. You read that well, article? With the, no. But, but Skynet I thought, vibes. I thought it was fascinating that this thing right. that's not alive, right? That's to you, says you, software, says you, is not willing to say that it's using the internet to find the answers to your questions. And will not admit that it's giving you financial advice. I mean, it is just one step away from doing a job yeah. that people do around the country and get paid very well. Okay, so it's coming right. for everyone. We covered all of our bases to kind of put a bow I, well, on again, this. Well, again, it's not coming for plumbers. It, like you said, it's not going to fix my toilet. No. Right? But it no. might be coming for your uh, lowly financial advisor. Yeah or your lawyer, or your doctor, or your airplane pilot.
All right, we're screwed. All right, guys. We'll see you next time. Adios. Adios.